Thank you, Michael Stillwater, for sharing your wonderful talents with that beautiful tribute to those we've lost. My name is Monica McDade, and I'm the campaign director for Unite for Safe Care. Coming up, we want to share the stories of patients that have survived. Surviving medical errors should be joyful. However, sometimes it is a cautionary tale of what you never want to have happen to anyone else. In this space, let us celebrate those who have survived medical harm and see what these inspiring people have gone on to do. Let's watch Alicia Cole's story. Just as the nurse was about to put down the white padding that was over my incision, my mother said, wait a minute, there's something on her stomach. Looked like a mole. And my mother asked the nurse to call the doctor to come back, and uh, she didn't want to. She said, I am not going to call the doctor for what's going to turn out to be nothing. My mother said, I'll call the doctor. I'll never forget, I was looking at my doctor, and I raised the gauze, and I just saw his face completely change. And when I looked down at my abdomen, the black dot was gone, and there was a quarter-sized pustule. The infection kept spreading, and it was starting to go down my leg. Over 2 million patients a year get hospital-acquired infections. I ended up having six more surgeries, nine blood transfusions. I left the hospital with an open abdomen that took three years to close. My hospital, they were cited for being in violation of five state laws and 10 federal laws for unsanitary conditions in their operating rooms. It took me 10 years of almost weekly physical therapy to get back to a new normal life. I spent this past year, 2017, fighting for my life all over again. I went to the hospital with a sinus infection and they said, okay, we're going to keep you because it looks like you're starting to be in the early stages of sepsis. Well, the next morning, the infectious disease doctor came and he said, oh, great news. We're gonna send you home. And I said, really? And he said, you know my history. I said, I'm a survivor of sepsis, pseudomonas, MRSA, VRE, and necrotizing fasciitis. Can we wait until my labs come back before you discharge me? And, you know, I'd like to see what some of the cultures are saying. And he goes, oh, we didn't, we didn't do any cultures. We don't need that. And, you know, we did a test for pneumonia and influenza, and you're fine. You don't have those. So we're going to go ahead and let you go home. And I said, well, can I get a second opinion on that? Can we talk to someone about that? And he said, I'm the best infectious disease doctor in the Valley, probably the state. Any other doctor is going to tell you the same thing I'm telling you. I ended up having two more surgeries, two more blood transfusions, deep vein thrombosis, blood clots in both arms. I was right back where I was five years before. And it just, it really cemented for me the need to change the way we teach doctors, the way we treat doctors, the way they interact with patients and patients interact with them. We need to start sharing patient experience with our medical students, with our nursing students, so that they can get it from the horse's mouth. When you're building your, your house, your profession, you want to make sure that you build it on a solid foundation of patient safety. It's a major reason why we've seen 50,000 fewer preventable patient deaths in hospitals. And if you want to know what that means, ask uh, Alicia Cole, who suffers the long-term effects of a hospital-acquired infection. You know, we've learned a lot in healthcare, and we're better than we were 10 years ago. We're doing great at talking about patient-centered care. We're doing great at talking about preventing errors. We've got to do better in the action of it. Oh, Alicia, thank you for sharing your continuing story. 
We appreciate your bravery and your resilience. You are a survivor and I applaud you. When I was 31, it took me six months to get diagnosed with breast cancer. I had to beg, plead, and negotiate with my general practitioner and the insurance company to get proactive care. The GP kept telling me it was nothing, I was too young, and since I had no family history, I should just get on with my life. Had I listened to him, I wouldn't be here with you today. Being a survivor of misdiagnosis made me become an advocate for my own care and for those I love. Hi, I'm Alicia Cole, and I'm a survivor of sepsis, pseudomonas, MRSA, VRE, and necrotizing fasciitis. I'm actually a two-time survivor of sepsis and necrotizing fasciitis following medical care. And I wanna say thank you. Thank you for participating today. Thank you for joining us for World Patient Safety Day. Thank you for joining in our campaign to unite for safe care. If you're here to join us in our campaign for safe care, it means that you care about patients. It means that you care about your family, that you care about healthcare providers. It means that you care about yourself and your community. And I thank you. After surviving medical harm, you have weeks of recovery at best, months if you're lucky, years if you're fortunate. And some of us, it's a lifetime journey. Unfortunately, making it out of the hospital is just the first step. Well, I feel very fortunate to have survived medical harm. There are a lot of people that can't be with us today or can't speak like I am speaking to you today because of the medical harm. Um, it's an honor for me to be here and be able to share my story so that other people don't have to experience what I've been through. So the key word is I'm fortunate and I survived. Jack and Teresa Gentry are two of my heroes. After Jack suffered a catastrophic, life-changing event, the Gentrys feared they would receive the same deny, lie, and defend tactics Steve and Margot Burroughs received after their mother, Judy, was harmed. However, the hospital where Jack was harmed immediately implemented an open and honest approach known as CANDOR, which stands for Communication and Optimal Resolution. Jack and Teresa were so impressed with how they were treated, they have been presenting to healthcare systems across the country, sharing their story and why every hospital needs to implement the Agency for Healthcare Quality and Safety's CANDOR Toolkit. Full transparency with open and honest communication after preventable medical harm is not only the right thing to do, but is also the smart thing to do. Please join me in welcoming my good friends, Jack and Teresa Gentry. As a survivor of medical harm, um, for me personally, it just, um, it took me down a different path in life that I had no expectations prior to the, um, the incident of traveling. And um, it made me aware that there are, I'm not alone um, as a survivor and it made me aware of the hundreds of thousands of people who die from preventable medical errors. So it just, it just changed where I was going in life. I'm most proud of the fact that I've had the, been afforded the opportunity to both locally and nationally take the message of the importance of dealing with patient safety and transparency to other hospital administrators and insurance companies and pharmacists um, of the, how difficult it is to um, be a victim of a med a preventable medical harm. And I'm proud of the fact that um, I've been able to take that message around the country and 
hopefully um, have impacted um, some of the folks that uh, I've spoken to. I think one of the things that I'm proud of is that we have been able to make our lives successful and fulfilling after medical harm, including our family, our friends, and all the people we've met. And it's been interesting, the work we do, being able to change just one person's outcome by spreading the word about medical error and or transparency in healthcare is one of the greatest rewards. I know we feel very thankful when we hear back that something like that has really had a positive effect. Thank you, Jack and Teresa. You're an inspiration. We need hope. We need inspiration now. We need a plan for change. We need a way to provide safer care for everyone. Don't we all deserve that? Help us make impactful change. Uh...